Okay, so uh, Louisville then and now. That's Louisville then. Louisville now. Yay! <laughs> so we'll be discussing what the city used to look like as to oppose what it looks like today. Yeah. And hopefully I'm talking loud enough so everyone can hear me. Raise your hand if you can't hear me, but I'll try and talk loud enough. Um, so back in the day, we used to uh, go through uh, the, the canal. Yeah. That's one reason why Louisville is here, due to the falls of the Ohio. And they built a canal back in the early 1800s to bypass the falls of the Ohio to get the steamships up and down the river. So you can see what the canal looked like back in the day. And that's what it looks like today. Uh, it's very large. It can accommodate up to 15 barges at a time. Um, they say that it contains as much tonnage as the uh, Panama Canal does as well. But anyways, uh, so our um, canal system has changed a lot over the years, as has our transportation. Again, we used to be steamboat based. Then we were railroads, now we're airplane, UPS. I wonder what the future, yeah. up the line. Um, the uh, Steamboat Idlewild, which was uh, launched in 1914. It became the Avalon in 1948. And today we know it as our Bell of Louisville. So it has changed a lot over the years, in the past 100 and what, 10 years. This is our waterfront down at the uh, wharf area down the Ohio River, looking down on the interstate there, Spaghetti Junction. That's what it looks like today. You can see it used to be very industrial. Now we have this beautiful green lawn area on the waterfront. Uh, uh, here's another view of the industrial waterfront back in the... Uh, this would have been in the 1960s, about 60 some odd years ago, and that's what it looks like today. It looks like a big green welcoming mat. Um, we uh, saved the old Big Four Bridge. That's what it looks like now. It's a pedestrian bridge, but it used to, some of you may recall, WLRS Radio used to own it, and they had a big sign up on it as well. So the bridge has changed also. Here's a downtown Louisville, uh, just over 60 years ago. And everything in yellow that you see there has been demolished. Oh, so we demolished most of our urban area there. All of that's been demolished? All been taken out. So here is uh, West Main Street in the 1860s. And if you keep your eye there on that one building that I circled, there's that same building in the 1920s. And there's that same building today. So West Main Street has changed quite a bit as well over the past hundred some odd years, 150 years. It must have been internally pretty good shape too. Yeah. Uh, here's looking at Jefferson Street towards City Hall. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like today. So there you, you can still see City Hall and the courthouse on the right, but yeah. everything on the left, uh, as you can see, has changed. Mm -hmm. That. Here is at uh, Jefferson and 2nd Street downtown. But what I circled there, that's Christ Church Cathedral. It's still there. Then, um, so they demolished this one hotel that you see here on the left. And they built this little concrete building, this blueprint company. Now it's called the Love Boutique. <laughs> Anyone been down to the Love Boutique? Mm -hmm. No, okay, that's good. I don't want to know. If you've been there, I don't want to know. But anyways, yeah, so that, that streetscape has changed. At least they had turned so, down the church. So here is a 4th Street looking north towards Jefferson. And if you look what I just circled there, that building is in every one of these photographs. So this is the same view looking up 4th Street. Did someone own that building? That and this is what it looks like today. So we went from that to that. And that? Oh. A little bit of a dramatic change, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Here's another view of uh, Forest Street, looking at that same tall building from what it looks like today. 
And there's that one tall building again that I, I've been talking about. Very ornate, very nice high rise, wouldn't you say? That's a beautiful building. Now look at the base of it there. Here's what the base looked like. Very ornate and very nice. It's what they put in its place. What? What do you think? A little bit of change? Wait a minute. A bank. Wait a minute. Yeah. They, put they tore that, the other, the other yeah, one down. Yeah, they tore that all down and they, they built tore that it down. down. That's a shame. I mean, some of those So things. they may actually modify this as well. <laughs> Just recently, they took off of that exterior of that old bank building. They proposed this. Churchill Downs proposed a, a casino downtown. And that's what it looks like today. I just took that photograph about a week ago. So that's what it looks like now. So we went from that to that. Yeah, it's down at 4th and Market. And that's the interior of that casino in downtown Louisville. For the change. Here is another office building in downtown Louisville, the Atherton building at 4th and Walnut, which we now know <laughs> as 4th and Muhammad Ali. And then they built this glass high rise there. That's a beautiful building, I have to say. It's beautiful. I can get this going. It's got a reflection of the cathedral. Hang on, it's for some reason my. Uh, what is that? Is that the cathedral? I'm probably going to have to do this by hand since my uh, thing, for some reason, has stopped working. It's uh, locked up here. Hang on just for a second. We'll let it regenerate. Sometimes it gets technical and uh, stops working. Can I rework it again? Hmm. Don't know why. Let me see if I can do it like this. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. It's that the uh, computer is thinking about what it should do next. <laughs> yeah, it's not one that's that's weird. It's not done this before. Hang on. Hmm. Well, hang on. Why is it not working? Let me hit the escape button. But it will work here eventually. Hang on just for a second. It's sometimes it gets caught up in itself and it has to uh, go through the process of uh, rethinking. But yeah, so we've uh, demolished a lot of buildings in downtown Louisville and built newer buildings in their place, sometimes with, with lesser quality. Huh. I have no idea why. Yeah. This thing has all of a sudden locked up on me. So I've done this before. I may have to shut it down and redo it, but I don't want to do that. Hang on. Oh, there we go, finally. Hmm. I have no idea what went wrong there, but... So then, um, this is another building that was once like that, and then it now looks like this. Oh. Here's looking uh, north on 4th from Chestnut Street. That's what it looks like today. Ooh, I think they tore a bird. Yeah. So uh, we had this very ornate building there on the right, the old post office building. They demolished that wow. in the 1940s. Wow. They and built a parking garage in its place. I think they tore down some beautiful buildings. So now then, why would they have demolished this beautiful building? Why would you think they would have tore it down? Well, the reason why is they built another beautiful building, the new post office at 6th and Broadway. So they did replace it. It's unfortunate, though, they, they couldn't keep the old one as well. Here is the Humana building in downtown. Some of you hopefully have seen that. Do you know what was there prior to the Humana building? An Ollie's trolley. <laughs> so golly, we got rid of an Ollie's trolley for a human. Actually, prior to Ollie's trolley, uh, there was this building here. It was called the United States Trust Company building. So it was on that site prior to Humana. But um, I do think that uh, Humana is a very nice quality structure. And even though we lost an ornate historic building, we replaced it with a new landmark, the Humana building. 
And that's my philosophy. I don't mind losing historic buildings as long as we replace them with a equal to better quality building. Yeah. Here's a good example here. Uh, the Coleman building, which was at the corner of uh, 3rd and Market. The uh, Marriott Hotel wanted to tear that building down and we horrible preservationists said no. Why can't you incorporate that into your uh, hotel, and that's what they did. They incorporated it there at the corner. Here's another view looking up uh, 4th Street. It's now called 4th Street Live. Another view. Looks like a concrete canyon, doesn't it? The buildings. Were they all like apartments, those old buildings? No, they were mainly offices and retail stores. So there's 4th Street Lab there. Here is Broadway, and this is really more of a sin that our predecessors did to Broadway. Broadway was once just a beautiful street with all sorts of ornate buildings lining it. All the wealthy once lived on Broadway. They had beautiful estate type of buildings. But then we did this to it. They tore that church down too. Yeah, it was a oh, synagogue a at one shame. point. Yeah, that was they a beautiful it church. There's, here's another view up Broadway. What's there now? Yeah, you know, another another, view. another sixty, another eighty view of, years they'll tear those buildings yeah. down. Another view of uh, Broadway. That's what it looks like today. Yeah, so the. Um, Churches, as noted, is still there, and they wanted to tear that down as well, but we horrible preservationists prevented them from doing that. Um, but they did tear down this beautiful ornate church. But as noted earlier, they replaced it with a landmark. They built an Easter Seals building there when they tore that church down. But now the Norton Cancer Center is there. So, yes, we lost the nice church, but we gained the Cancer Center. By the way, that church building that you see there, the architect built a second duplicate, same church in Asheville, North Carolina. So if you want to see that church, you go to Asheville, North Carolina, and it still exists. He duplicated it. The congregations did not know that they were buying a, a duplicate uh, design, but uh, it did. And I've actually been there and been inside it. And it's this beautiful church. So it does exist in another city. What national? What was that church? What? It was a Methodist church. Methodist. Uh, this is Broadway looking that way. Here are some more churches that no longer exist along there. Soldier's Confectionery. It was a very popular refreshment place. I think Confectionery, it was like a soda stand. They sold all sorts of uh, candies and good treats and things like that, but they replaced it with the Brown Hotel. Mm -hmm. So I think we can take the Brown over Soldier's Confectionery. Uh, Penny's downtown on 4th Street. Then they turned it into an office building that you see there. Then they demolished the entire thing. And they built this nice residential building in downtown Louisville. Which to me looks That's, fairly nice. That is a beautiful building. I think it turned out to be pretty well along Fourth there. I have to admit, it's a pretty building, yeah. Uh, Stewart's Department Store. Some of y'all may recall going to Stewart's. Mm -hmm. It is now the Embassy Suites Hotel. And I've actually stayed in the Embassy Suites, and it's very nice on the inside. They did a very nice job. Yeah, Bears Fabric. Does anyone remember Bears Fabric? Yes. Oh my gosh, this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. legendary. Uh, textile store in downtown Louisville. You name it, they had it. My daughter is in fashion design and she loved to go down to Bears Fabric and spend all day looking at stuff. And that's what's there today. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. It's part of Angel's Envy Distillery. Kind of sad. Mm -hmm. Bacon's Department Stores. A lot of you may have gone to Bacon's Department Stores. Mm -hmm. This was one of its original locations down on East Market Street across from that McDonald's, which is there in East Market Street. Then oh. it deteriorated and looked like this for a long time. Not very salvageable, would you think? Looks like it's about ready to fall down. Well, they, uh, some investor bought it, 
turned it into residential, and now it looks like this. Mm -hmm. I think they did a pretty decent job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are those apartments now? Yeah, it's condominiums and apartments. So now then, shopping, as noted earlier, with Bacon's department store and Levy's and Stewart's and all, they used to be going downtown to shop. Mm -hmm. Now you go out to the suburbs to shop. There is, you can't buy anything downtown as far as clothing or anything like that in downtown anymore. You have to come out to the suburbs. So when you come out to the suburbs, you could have gone to Iroquois Manor, which is there in south southern part of Louisville. And that's what that same retail strip looks like now. Um, this is in uh, the Highlands area, there at Baxter and Bardstown Road. It looks like this. It's now a Starbucks. Bashford Manor. When I was growing up, I always thought Bashford Manor was a shopping mall. But it actually was a mansion. It used to actually raise a Kentucky Derby thoroughbreds there on that farm. And it's now a big retail center. But Bashford Manor was once a horse farm. Now, we shop via Amazon. I'm not sure if many of you have shop via Amazon, but my wife loves shopping Amazon, which is digital. Uh, Muhammad Ali, looking east from 7th Street. That's what it looks like today. It's unfortunate they wiped out all... This was the legendary African-American business district, and it was totally wiped out. That was pretty much all African-American businesses along there. It was totally uh, eliminated. Here is another version looking uh, south from um, Market Street. That's what it looks like today. So we went from all of that construction to that. Yeah, it's kind of a shame. Here's another view of that similar area. That's what it looks like today. All vacant lots and parking garages. This was a nice uh, project. Uh, they, in the upper part of this uh, photograph, you see the older building there, and the lower part is how they just recently uh, renovated it. And they added on to it, they built it up, so, and that's all apartments now, the, lower, the building in the lower part. So we do are able to reclaim some of these historic buildings and make them all new again. Anyone remember the Louisville clock? Yeah. <laughs> well, believe it or not, I was part of a team that we uh, reassembled the clock. After it got taken down in the early 2000s and stored away, a number of us got together and we got the uh, clock reassembled and installed on Theater Square back in 2012-2015 era. It was working fine, looked great, but then Kindred Healthcare came along and said they wanted that area to build their new expansion. And so they took the clock away, they demolished everything, and Come they built on. their new building. Mm -hmm. So they demolished, we went, they demolished that clock? Well, the clock we took down, it's back in storage again. Oh, okay. But I doubt if Humpty Dumpty will ever come back again. Oh. It's pretty much gone at this That's point. Shame. Uh, the Castleman structure, Castleman sculpture, some of you may recall this, for over 100 years, from 1912 to 2018, that's 106 years, the Castleman sculpture existed in Cherokee Triangle without anyone saying a word about it. Mm -hmm. Then there were some pr protesters that came along in 2019 and 2020 that said, oh gosh, Castleman yeah. was a bad guy, we need to take down his statue. And they since took the statue down, they put it, and you can see in the lower part of the thing there, it's in a city storage lot. However, everything that the activists said was incorrect. Uh, Castleman was a good guy. Yes, he did participate in the Confederate Army as a teenager, but as an adult, he learned his lesson. And he did a lot of great things for Louisville, such as the Olmstead Park system, uh, he was friends to the African-American community. In fact, many African-Americans praised Castleman for his efforts on, on behalf of their community. Um, he was a U.S. Army general. Mm -hmm. He was not a general in the Confederacy. He was just a major. He was a low-level officer in the Confederacy as a teenager. 
Well, anyways, he learned his lesson and he did good as an adult. Uh, we're still working on getting this uh, statue back up. Stay tuned. Hopefully someday it'll come back. We're, we've got several legal challenges about it. But anyways, that's then and this is now. Uh -oh. The King Louis statue. Oh, no. Yeah, same thing happened to King Louis. Um, oh, the protesters didn't like his statue either, even though that's a direct representation of our city's namesake, King Louis, Louisville. In fact, King Louis's daughter commissioned that statue, so it's a direct link to King Louis. Uh -huh. And uh, the protesters didn't like that either, and so they've since put that in storage as well. So hopefully one day that will come back. But it's unfortunate that happened. Well, that must have just happened because the dates on there are this. Yeah, it uh, happened in the last three or so years. Really? Uh -huh. Now then, in downtown Louisville, used to be all residential. There were mainly houses in downtown. This is a view of a downtown block, and all those little pinkish, reddish squares were houses. People lived there. Now, it's our medical center. They wiped out all of those houses and put the medical center there. All the hospitals in that area. Wow. Here's another example. Uh, this was the old Norton Hospital. It was in the old Louisville neighborhood. Trayton Oak Tower now exists there. Mm -hmm. This was a, a corner down in old Louisville at Ormsby and 4th Street. And it had all these beautiful houses around that intersection, but they've all been demolished and oh other buildings God. have been put up in place. That is a shame. Very beautiful buildings were there. God. So let's get back out here to St. Matthews where we're at currently. Uh, this is a Shelbyville Road that we're looking at here. And believe it or not, a lot of that that's depicted on this image is still here. I'll go... Uh, the Mall of St. Matthews is where you see in the upper corner, but... So Mall of St. Matthews, the Zachary Taylor VFW is still there. They just demolished the Freshes. Some of you may know that. The big boy is no longer there. Mm -hmm. But Shelbyville Road Plaza is there, the Baptist Church, Community Center, 10 Pen Bowling. So a lot of that, if I go back to it, was there. The, the drive-in theater is now gone as well as the golf driving range, although they built Top Golf just a little bit farther down the road. But uh, anyways, a lot of that still is there. Also in St. Matthews, this is looking along Shelbyville Road, near where Breckenridge Lane crosses uh, uh, Shelbyville Road, and that's what it looks like today. Gerstles is still there. There's Gerstles. And this, uh, um, let me come back. And the... Uh, Billboard is still there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The White Castle has since gone. Yeah. And it's gone again. Uh, yeah. They just closed our White Castle here in St. Matthews. They did what? They just. Yeah, it's closed. Yeah. And they uh, built this new bank building that you see there. So that intersection has changed a lot in the last just 20 years. Pryor's Restaurant. Does anyone remember Pryor's Restaurant oh, yeah. on Shelbyville Road at Hubbard's Lane? Oh, yeah. Then they turned it into an Arby's. Now it's an automobile dealership. Mm -hmm. They totally demolished it. Yeah. But Pryor's was a very famous uh, local St. Matthews uh, restaurant. Yeah. Uh, this was a beautiful building. This yeah. uh, used to be a uh, Thorpe down. Interiors. It was an interior design place. And it was designed by Taliesin Associates. Y'all probably have no idea who Taliesin is, but they, it was the successor firm to Frank Lloyd Wright. If you've ever heard of Frank Lloyd Wright, yeah. the architect, famous architect, yeah, the, the people that succeeded him after he died, Taliesin came along. And so this is a direct connection to Frank Lloyd Wright, this uh, building, yeah. which is on uh, Chenoweth Lane. Yeah. Then after Thorpe Interior sold the building, a doctor's group bought it. And they painted it white. Oh. I love the color brick. It was sort of an uh, orangey, goldish style brick. Beautiful brick. Oh. And they painted it white. Oh, I couldn't believe it when they did that. The Vogue Theater. Some of y'all may remember the Vogue. Oh, yeah. There's some seats up front here if you'd like to come on up. Uh, 
maybe if you can kind of come across here. So the Vogue, some of you may have gone to the movies at the Vogue. It's now a retail center. Uh, this is another theater down at 18th and Broadway. That's a beautiful building. Then they did that to it. They oh, turned it no. into a pawn shop. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like that, that, that goldish <gasps> facade. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was a beautiful building. I mean, uh, the Rialto Theater. Some of you may have recalled the Rialto Theater. There's one more seat up front here. Okay. The Rialto, some of you may have gone there. Then they demolished that back in 1969. They built a parking garage in its place. <laughs> um, of course, after the downtown theaters closed, we all went to movie theaters out in the suburbs such as these showcase cinemas. Does anyone remember the showcase cinemas? They opened about 50 years ago. They always, it was the first run movie theater here in Louisville. A lot of great movies there. They since demolished all of that and it's now a Costco. Anyone been out to Costco lately? That's where the, on Bardstown Road, and a Chick-fil-A. So uh, we used to go to a movie theater uh, down at the theater district. We used to go to the movies there, then to the Showcase Cinemas. Then at Tinseltown, which is out off Westport Road. Nowadays, the younger generation goes to Netflix. Some restaurants have changed as well. This was the old Miller's Cafeteria in downtown Louisville. Then they modified it, they took off the restaurant, and they tur turned it back into the original house I that, like was, that. that was nice. once there. Yeah. So it actually went back in time. Instead of being yeah. modified, they went back to its original appearance. Well, is that a cafeteria still? It once was. No, it's now a bed and breakfast, I believe, oh, or an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. Cunningham's Restaurant in downtown Louisville. Now it's this, it's an apartment complex. They also built a, uh, Cunningham's in downtown. White Castle has changed a lot over the years. I love the porcelain White Castles. Then they demolished the porcelain White Castles. They built the uh, country block White Castles, which to me, for some reason, doesn't quite uh, taste the same. <laughs> The kingfish, some of you may recall the, uh, the steamboat kingfishes. Yeah. And then they built the Muhammad Ali Center uh, where that once that kingfish, kingfish once was. Some of you may have gone out to a ball game out at the fairgrounds. It was both uh, baseball and football out at the uh, fairground stadium. Then they demolished that. And now it's just a big empty parking lot at the fairgrounds. I think all the seats are taken. Maybe they'll bring another seat in. There they are. They'll bring another seat in. So we used to go to a variety of arenas for uh, ball games. Used to go to the old armory, our Louisville Gardens in downtown Louisville. Some of you may recall that. Then we went to Freedom Hall. Now we go to Yum Arena. So a lot of arenas in, in Louisville. Uh, the Caden Tower, some of you may be familiar with that. Again, it was designed by Taliesin Associates, which was connected to the Frank Lloyd Wright firm. That's what it looks like today. But that's how it was built. It actually is what's called a suspended building. They have huge trusses at the very top, and they suspended the floors by cables from the top down. You can literally walk underneath this building. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And then at Christmas time, they used to decorate it like this. Some I mean, of y'all may recall when they used to do yeah, it like this. Yeah. They put a wreath on it, a Christmas yeah. tree. It was yeah. very spectacular as you drove by the Waterson yeah. Expressway. Right. Yeah. Mammoth Life Insurance Building in downtown Louisville. 
They put this metal screen around it, make it look more modern, although I like, I like that appearance more so than that. Yeah. That's what it looks like now. Yeah, I like the old. Uh, the University of Louisville, it is, was located at what was called the House of Refuge. The House of Refuge was for young adults, uh, children, very similar to the Home of the Innocents, if you're familiar with that. It is where they um, took orphans, children that had disp disciplinary problems, also um, they had any behavioral health issues. So the House of Refuge was a campus for children and young adults, which was located way out from downtown Louisville. It was down at, on 3rd and Eastern Parkway. Back in the day, it was way out in the countryside. Then when they moved out, they moved out to uh, Ormsby Village and several other uh, campuses in, in Jefferson County. So they abandoned the House of Refuge site and the University of Louisville came along and they bought that site and turned it into their new campus. So U of L is located on the House of Refuge old campus. And you can still see a, this was from 1968. And uh, you can see that uh, some of the older buildings there, there's uh, the, the old chapel which was turned into a, a playhouse. A lot of the uh, historical buildings on the campus of U of L once were part of the House of Refuge. There's the old Parkway Field, baseball field. Some of you may recall that if you went to any ball games. I think Babe Ruth played a game there at one point. But anyways, uh, it's 1968. Then here is uh, the campus in 1976. Just eight years later, they started building some more modern buildings here. And that's what it looks like today. So the campus has changed quite a bit. I'll go back and show you that. So we went from that to that there to a very mm -hmm. modern campus at U of L. Mm -hmm. And there's the administration building there in the center. Oh. <laughs> April 3rd, 1974, 50 years ago, 50 years ago, we had a major tornado here in Louisville which tore up the Highlands and Cherokee Park area of the city. That's what it looks like today, that same stretch of Bargetown Road. More Bargetown Road, what it looks like today. Cherokee Park. If you see, uh, here's Hogan's Fountain and that TP Pavilion. If you notice, all the trees have been torn down. Yeah. And there it is today. So all the trees are back, thank goodness. What was that little, in the red circle there again? Red circle is Hogan's Fountain. And the yellow circle is the TP. What happened to the TP recently? They tore it down. And so it no longer exists, unfortunately. The TP Pavilion was just demolished last year. Yeah. We have our Olmstead Parks, which were developed in the late 1800s, early 1900s. That was then. Today, we have what's called 21st Century Parks, or the Parklands at Floyd's Fork. And it's just a beautiful Parklands that they built. It's out past the uh, Gene Snyder Freeway between Shelbyville Road and Bardstown Road. It stretches 20 miles. Here's Cave Hill Cemetery. If you look at that one monument that I circled there in red, so that's in 1898. That's what it looks like today, Cave Hill. There's that same monument. That's the same one? Yeah, so you can see they've kind of filled it in just a bit. Go back one more. Go back one more. In the distance, is that what is? Oh, those are just trees. I thought maybe it was down yeah, buildings in the background, but those are just trees. Yeah. Closer to the front. I know, but keep going. Somebody check it. Yeah, there's one street here. Uh, there's a chair there on the far side there. Yeah. Um, here. Fountain Ferry Park, which we Louisvillians always mispronounce. It's Fontaine 
Ferry Park, not Fountain Ferry, but for whatever reason we used to call it Fountain Ferry Park, not Fontaine. And it was uh, closed and changed back about 50 or so years ago into another, it's called River Glen Park. And today it's totally gone. Totally, uh, nothing exists of it today. Locust Grove, one of our historic uh, uh, houses here in Louisville, where the Cron family once lived, George, connected to George Rogers Clark, who is the founder of Louisville. His sister Lucy owned this house. That's what it looked like in 1922. Notice that it had this little attachment to it there on the right. Here's what it looks like today. And there you can see a little shadow of where that oh, one little yeah. attachment was, oh. a little outbuilding. Oh. But yeah, so they renovated uh, Locust Grove and made it into what it used to look like when George Rogers Clark was there. Well, how do they, how do they, they used the bricks or something for that? How come they they just restored it. Yeah, they made it, just fixed it up, restored it. Yeah, but I mean that little area. That they, they, well, they took off the, uh, the addition and then they infilled it. Yeah, they had to repair the oh. bricks. Oh. They did so. Speaking of repairing, throughout Louisville right now, people are going through the neighborhoods and renovating uh, derelict type of buildings, buildings that have been deteriorated. Here's a good example. This is in the uh, Portland neighborhood of Louisville. If you see up above, that's what it looked like in 2016, yeah. and down below is what it looks like now. Those are beautiful Someone homes. went in and just really uh, renovated yeah. it, made it look very nice. That is beautiful, yeah. Did a nice job. Here's another sort of bungalow style home, yeah. and they had just fixed it up recently. Anyone remember the Louisville Times newspaper? Oh, yeah, of course. What does it look like now? Ads. <laughs> Gone. The TV. Oh, the Louisville TV, Times huh? no longer exists. Ads and sports. <laughs> Ads and sports. Of course, the Courier Journal still exists. But most people use USA Today. Yeah. This is Whiskey Row in downtown Louisville. Believe it or not, about in 2009 or so, um, some people wanted to totally demolish this. They wanted to bulldoze this entire area oh of uh, West God. Main Street. In fact, it caught on fire oh. in 2015. But guess what? We in the preservation community were able to convince some folks that, hey, why don't we restore this Whiskey Row? We think it could be a very valuable asset to the city. And now it's probably the most highest value real estate in the city of Louisville. It's got distilleries on it. It's got hotels. It's turned. You go down there now, there's hardly any Louisvillians there. It's all visitors from out of town. Uh, recently, I met some people from England that were here in Louisville visiting the city because of this. And so people come from around the world to see our distilleries, they hear about Whiskey Row, and just think, 10, 15 years ago, the city fathers wanted to tear it all down. Oh my God. Well, that, is that a facade, that one building? Is that yeah, the, some of the facades they were able to save. But uh, anyways, yeah. So here's what Louisville looked like back in, what, 1840. This was the skyline in 1840, kind of primitive, wouldn't you say? Yes. There's what it looked like in the 1890s. 1922, just a hundred years ago. 1940s. 1940s also. 1950s. 54. 59, 63, we got the Kennedy Bridge built, 68, 70, 77, some of you may remember the ice storm and the uh, frigid temperatures then. You could literally walk across the, walk across the Ohio back in 77, 78. Yeah, I remember that and what uh, downtown Louisville looks like today. Yeah. So the city has come a long ways over the past, uh, what we've been around since uh, 1778, 
80. So that's what, the 264 years ago, I guess you could say. We've been around a while and have changed quite a bit. So there you go. Thank you all for joining. Hopefully you all enjoyed all that.